Welcome to the exam briefing in 15 minutes or less. So first thing I want to say is have a little faith. Um, when I put up an exam question in class, people grabbed the phones, took screen caps. Look, I appreciate that. But there was also a real sense that uh, somehow I was going to make the exam information go away. I'm not. So here it is. The session, it's going to be on Monday, the 4th of November. It will be in Hayden Allen G53. Uh, it will start at 2 o'clock and it will run for two hours. I will be there a bit before the start of the exam. I will be there at the end of the exam to collect the exams. And I will be marking the exams that afternoon, evening. So, because I'm going to be marking the exams rather quickly and on a very short deadline, I'd like to make this as easy as humanly possible for me without actually having to increase the amount of difficulty I have to put on the exam. Now I've also thrown in the link for what to expect when you are sitting an exam, examination conduct. A couple of things that we need to highlight is that there are prohibited items, any prohibited device is prohibited. You cannot bring in electronic devices but Here's the killer. You can't have a watch. Look, real, really sorry about this level of stupid that's existing in the exam. I'd forgotten about this, otherwise I would have given you a better assessment task. You can't have an analog or a digital watch because someone somewhere is rumored to have programmed a smart watch to do a thing. Sorry about that. Uh, if you do need a dictionary, you'll have to make it a print dictionary. Obviously, uh, you can't bring a laptop exam in if you're not allowed to have an analog watch. Uh, try other things. <laughs> Smart glasses. It can only be a matter of time before you're going to have to actually show your prescription for your analog glasses. And uh, headphones. Now look, if you can get a Bluetooth earpiece tucked away inside your ear, I will find it because I will be broadcasting Rick Astley's uh, Never Gonna Give You Up on loop on Bluetooth. So good luck in not uh, putting that into the exam if you're trying that method. So here's the deal. The exam plays a role. At the end of the semester, I'm going to assemble the entire class in a box and collectively, on your own, you're all going to answer a set of questions. Now, the end game here is I want you, the two learning outcomes from the exam, so they guide how the exam's going to work. The synthesis and relate theory is the idea that you have spent a semester learning how to use services marketing. It is services marketing theory is basically the toolkit, it's everything. Every idea we've talked about, you've read, there's been on the slide decks, there's been in the readings. Any of these can be used to solve a problem, and the problem is the exam question. The critically evaluate case studies. You are going in there with a set of knowledge and experience. That's where the point of the critical evaluation is going to come in. It's how you use this knowledge. The exam questions are not set up to support blind, not set up to support bland recall. I don't want you simply to dump or dump information at me. I want you to use the knowledge you have and apply it. Use it in context. Be interesting with it and about it. So let's talk through the exam content review and a couple of the key ideas. Number one, part A of the exam, this is where you're going to spend one hour of your time. That's how it's going to work. It's a compulsory question, it's 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, 20% 20 of the exam. Everyone's going to deal with this question. This is the point where, this is the closest thing to consistency in this entire subject is everyone's up against the one question in the final. 
What the question is going to ask you to do is there's a named and specific theory present in the paper. So the question has that element filled out, named and specific theory. There is a very specific case study that is detailed in the question. To answer this, you need to use both parts of these contexts. This is the purpose of this question. It is to place you into an environment where you have just your own knowledge, you are given a context and a case, and asked to engage that context and case. To do well in this question, use the name theory, which is in this part of the question, apply it to the case here. You don't have to bring in any other case materials, you've just got a particular case context you're addressing. You'll see that it is a two-part question. So the what other service theories or frameworks could be applied to that very same specified specific case. Here, what I'm looking for is for you not just to be able to apply the A, the first priority, the A game here, but to be able to go, I suggest you could use this, that, and the next thing. Multiple alternates, multiple targets. And just explain to me how and why you'd use them. So this is half the exam. This question is half the exam, so it's going to need to be half of your answer, preferably half of your, exam, your answer booklet. You've got to balance this 20% against the next two 10%. If you don't, one of the things I evaluate for in the exam room is the ability to budget, allocate resources, and deal with time constraints. So if you write a very short part A, you're not giving yourself a huge amount of opportunity here in part B. Now, part B, two questions from three. You are meant to walk out of there going, oh, should I have done that third one instead of the second or the first, or the first or the second. You're supposed to have cognitive dissonance. It's a feature. There is a rationale behind this. I've been working you towards this all the way through semester. It is the mental preparation. It's the mind game heavy lifting that we do in marketing to be able to make decisions, to make choices, and know that those choices have consequences, but they also have opportunity costs and then move on and do make the next set of choices. So, in the questions, the first question, the, it's gonna be about market segmentation. Services marketing lives and dies on market segmentation, so market segmentation's a question. And I said right at the start of the semester, it was going to be a question. So, you're going to be given a context, an A or B context, and that is your starting point. Since it's an or question, you have to pick one or the other. Don't use both or it goes badly. Context A or context B, you'll see when you get into the exam, you crack open the page, you look at it and go, oh, those are the contexts. Got it, right, with you. The question you're asking is, how can a specific marketing strategy, which will be named, this element here is named on the paper so that you are responding to that concept which is in the context of how can it be used to improve the specific marketing outcome that is listed here. To answer this question, these two give you context that you need to apply in the application of the strategy to the outcome. This is the skill set that this exam is both teaching and assessing, is the ability to pick up a context and go, this is how I'm going to address it, this is how I'm going to respond to it. Now you may make use of a couple of sets of reusable knowledge that you've used before in both SA1 and SA2, and that will make it 
a better fit for you so that you're walking in having trained in this content, you have some context, you have some content that you have practiced and rehearsed through your essays and they are available, that you can reuse that knowledge, you can reuse that context. Question two, co-creation was, as always, on the agenda. The three traits, service experience and credence, are on the agenda. These are in the exam. So, in the framework here, when creating a, as a common marketing task, which will be named and listed, what challenges do services marketing or services marketers, depends how you want to frame it, face in how this particular commonly used theory here embrace or mitigate, so it's an, again, it's another either or, you have to choose one or the other, and embrace and mitigate have been the two key words throughout the entire semester. Embrace and mitigate is the concept of, and here's another frequently applied theory, and here's a third context. So basically, as generic, this question has been genericized a lot here to make it not give away the actual question. The keys are to answer it well, you either embrace or mitigate. You have content and context from the first two assignments that you can draw upon. So a specified named marketing task, you must make use of that named marketing task. You need to list out the challenges that are faced when embracing or the challenges faced when mitigating and you're using the second applied theory. So th the question is asking you to be very, sp very specific in your use of theories and ideas because they are named contexts. So we have a very clear client request. This question is about the, in essence, it's about getting you under pressure to look at a client request and respond appropriately to that request. And the third question of the choice of two is, the subduction model is making its appearance. So the question is, the subduction model indicates that there are four influences, service scape, invisible systems, service personnel, and other customers that impact the, gee, I wonder what that context is. Specific theory context. So when you're answering this question, you need to make reference to this specific theory context. It must feature in your answer. You are being given a very specific context to address, and you're being given a task. In which order do you feel these four factors were prioritized, and those are the same contexts? To succeed in this question, you need to give a rank order. It is a rank order of first, second, third, fourth. There is no equal. There is no, oh, everything was about third. Oh, no, I really felt that everything was like, there was a clear number one priority and then, then everything was equally ranked second. No. One. Unus, dos, treus, quatre. Un, deux, trois, quatre. One, two, three, four. That's how it's got to go. You've got to have a rank order to answer this question and do it right. You've got to have a rank order of the four elements and to talk about which order were these four factors, these four influences prioritized in that context statement. So it's got to reference the specific case context and it's got to have a priority ordering. Please get it. If you're doing this question, please get that part right. Have the context and the rank order. All right, so from here, those are the templates for the exam questions. This is not going to be made to go away. This isn't a trick. This isn't a trap. I want you to walk in to this exam and I want you to feel confident. I want you to apply your knowledge. I want you to use the cues and contexts 
of the exam question, and I want you to walk out the other side going, that was a good experience.